Hello, Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're going to be working on a little project. I'm going to be making a stand for a big anvil that I've got. I've got a 400-pound Fisher Norris anvil that I've had since I was in high school. Uh, I'll tell you the story about that anvil later. Uh, some of you may have heard it before, but uh, I've had it for a while. I've actually got it out, cleaned it up, got it looking good, and wanted to get it up off the ground on a stand where it's a little bit more useful to me out here in the shop. So uh, I drew up in uh, Fusion 360 the outline of the base of my anvil just like you see right here. Uh, I sent it down to a buddy of mine, Eric Rackley, who works down in Valdosta, Georgia, about an hour south of me down here. And uh, they've got a big um, plasma or, or laser. I'm really not exactly sure what it is, but they've got a CNC machine that cuts steel. Where he works at, uh, they do a lot of uh, custom fabricating of uh, pressured vessels and big tanks and just some really heavy duty crazy stuff. But uh, he was kind enough to, to cut me out a piece out of some half inch uh, plate here. And uh, this is what we're gonna mount the anvil to. Basically what I'm needing to do is put some legs up underneath it uh, to get it up off the ground. And to do that, I've got some square tubing here, some fairly thick wall tubing. Uh, we're gonna be cutting some legs. And I think what I'm gonna do is do a kind of a tripod up underneath it. So I have three legs instead of four. Three legs will always sit without rocking. Uh, if you have them in a tripod uh, spacing. So even on uneven ground, a tripod will always uh, sit solid. You won't have a rocking leg. So we're gonna go with a tripod arrangement and uh, I'm gonna cut these. I want my legs to flare out, I think about up uh, 30 degrees uh, on here. So what I'm gonna do is get my saw out. We're gonna cut this material here, clean up all this material, go weld it together and uh, put it under my anvil. So let's get going. First thing I'm gonna do here is get my legs cut. I've got this uh, square tubing I'm gonna be using to make them from. And uh, after doing some looking here, I think I've changed my plan a little bit. I'm gonna do a 20 degree angle flare out on the legs rather than 30. I think 30 was just a little bit too much. Uh, but I've got this set up. I've got my Morse uh, Metal Devil uh, saw here. This is kind of like a uh, uh, chop saw, but it's made for cutting metal. Love this thing. I use it actually quite a bit in the shop. And we've got the angle set up. Uh, they need to be, I think it's 16 inches long. I'll double check that before we cut the first one. But uh, go ahead and cut the angle here. There we go. First cut. Go ahead and measure the second one here. It needs to be 16 inches. So um, slide this in. That should be it right there. Be it right there. I think we're about ready to weld this in place. So. Um, just a little bit about what we've done here. So I went ahead and took a wire wheel. I got as much of the rust off of this as I could. It had a little bit of rust on it. And uh, from there, we've just gone over here and got it set up now well on the welding table. So I'm using this little angle fixture made by Fireball Tools to hold it in place. It's adjustable. You can put it whatever angle you want. I've got my piece clamped in here and that's just gonna help me make sure that this is staying at the right angle. I've got it positioned where I want it. We're gonna do three legs on it. 
And to weld it with, I'm using my Lincoln uh, 210 MP MIG welder uh, back here behind me. So let's get in here. Right now I'm just gonna tack it in place, uh, make sure everything looks good, and then uh, we'll weld it really well. That should hold that one in place. So I'm going to take this one off. We'll uh, just going to turn the whole thing around here. Take my next leg here, get it clamped in place. This thing has got the little tabs on the side that helps keep everything lined up nice and square. Really nice uh, little tool here made by Jason over at Fireball Tools. They've got several nice welding uh, jigs and squares and what have you for doing this kind of work. And uh, this is really coming in handy for what I'm doing right here now. So, all right, so this one's gonna go in this corner, kind of flare out at an angle. Let's go ahead and tack it in place. And that looks like it's gonna do exactly what we want it to do. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, weld those in place real good now. Those are all welded in place. Looks good. So last little bit here, I've got some little round feet. I'm gonna actually weld up underneath this and it'll sit on a pad. Uh, those are just some drops from uh, someone that was cutting some circles out with a, with a plasma cutter. 
and uh, they make great little feet for like this. I usually use them as feet up under machines and so forth, but in this case, we're gonna weld one up underneath one. The nice thing here is, is I can set this up now on this flat table, and uh, even if one of my legs is off just a little bit, if it's touching on the front or the side or something, when I weld this foot up underneath there, we well, should have a nice flat platform for it to sit on uh, as long as you're on a, on a flat surface. And if it's on an uneven surface, it'll still work out fine. So let's go ahead and weld those in place while we're in here. I'll start again by just tacking them all in place and then we'll weld them in, in place. All right, I think we got them all welded up. And I believe that wraps up our welding. I'm gonna let this cool down for a little while and uh, we'll probably hit it with some paint and it'll be ready to mount the anvil on. I think we've got our base all ready now. I will just comment that I put it all together, uh, put the anvil on it, just checked it out. I shared a couple of pictures with some friends of mine, one of them who's an engineer and said, hey, you really need to put some bracing down here up underneath the bottom with these legs flared out, banging on the anvil. Eventually those legs are gonna start creeping out. So I just got some half inch rod. I kind of put a piece of a round stock there in the middle that's a half inch thick, welded it all in. And that should keep those legs from flaring out over time. And um, it's pretty much ready to go. So let's put the anvil on. Got the anvil here on the uh, gantry crane. Try to get it over it as well as I can. And drop it down. It's still just barely hanging, but I want to got some bolts here, some square head bolts. Just drop those in there and make sure my holes are going to line up. It's the nice thing about these Fisher Norris anvils is that they have these uh, holes in the side for mounting. One of the few manufacturers if not the only one that, uh, that did that. I'm not aware of anybody else, but there very well could be. And so, yeah, get that lined up just right. This uh, cutout is a very, very nice match. He did an excellent, excellent job on it. Some wrenches here and tighten those up. stand and that's just the right height now if you don't know on an anvil uh, the rule of thumb is, is if you take your hand and kind of make it a fist and lay your hand down 
you should touch the top of it. That should be just the right height for when you're hammering on it to be hammering flat, not be hammering at an angle when your hammer comes down. So I had made special care when I was doing this to make sure I was going to end up at the right height, getting all my measurements just right. And presto, I'm happy, happy as a clam. I told you guys I'd tell you the story about my anvil and how I came uh, to get this. Uh, it goes back to sometime in the mid-1980s. I was a high school student. I had started doing some blacksmithing at home. Had a teacher, a metals teacher in, in, in my shop class that did a blacksmithing. He had a coal forge set up there at school where we could work on things. And I really just got interested in it and started setting up a little blacksmith shop at home. I had a little small anvil at this point in time. Uh, it actually belonged to my great-grandfather, one of my most cherished items that I have. Uh, but it was a small anvil. It only weighed 77 pounds. I've been looking for a larger anvil. And uh, one Saturday, I had a job working in an auto parts store and uh, after school and on weekends. One Saturday, I was working up there, and a guy that I knew came in and said, hey, there's a lady down the road that's having a yard sale, and she's got a bunch of stuff that she's selling. Found out later the story was, was the lady had caught her husband cheating on her and she was selling everything he had. I felt sorry for the dude, but someone was going to get the stuff. I figured I might as well join in the fun, so I went over there and uh, out there in the yard, actually in the weeds, was this anvil. I asked the lady how much for it. She looked at me, she said $50. I couldn't get the money out of my wallet fast enough. Now this was about 1985. 1986, somewhere along in that ballpark, still an exceptional deal on a 400 pound anvil. It's in great shape. Yeah, there's a couple of apologies around the edge here. I got a little bit of chipping here, uh, but the face is in great shape. The horn's in great shape. All in all, it's really in pretty nice shape. Uh, 400 pound anvil made by Fisher Norris. Uh, these are what some people called uh, your in-town blacksmith's anvil or something along those lines. They're made out of a cast iron base, but they have a, a very well welded tool steel face on top of them. Uh, and usually when people check anvils, they want to tap them and see what they see how they ring. And uh, the reason they call this a city man's anvil is because it didn't have that loud ring. So people in a neighborhood or whatever, uh, you could use this anvil and you didn't have, it wasn't as noisy, basically. Some people liked it, some people didn't. They were excellent, high quality anvils, still are today and considered to be that way today. Uh, but sometimes people will pass them by because they'll come by, hit them with a hammer, thunk, and they say, oh, that anvil's dead, I don't want it. That's not the case at all, at least not with these anvils. They were uh, made up in New Jersey, and uh, there were lots and lots of them made. I have seen a couple of examples, other examples of 400-pound anvils, just exactly like this. I wouldn't say they're super common, uh, but they're out there. Uh, and I'm very fortunate to have this one. Recently got it cleaned up, and uh, now we got, of course, got it on this nice stand. and be able to use it in the shop. So there you go. There's the story on my anvil. And with that, that's going to be a wrap on this episode. Thanks for watching me build the anvil stand and listen to my yarns about uh, how I came across this one 35 something years ago. And uh, it's been a member of the family ever since. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments. They're always welcome. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video.